All right, what's up, Group Monkeys? Um, I told you we were going to get into the automations and setting up webhooks with Group Monkey. So we're going to go in and actually do that right now. So in order to set up webhooks with Group Monkey, in this video, we're going to target the platform called Zapier. So um, if you want to set up your webhooks with Zapier, then that's what we're going to cover in this video. If you don't use Zapier and you want to use a different platform, then uh, you may not want to watch this video. You can still watch this video if you want because you'll understand from the group monkey side how to actually set up your webhooks. And then from your platform that's giving you the webhook, whether it's Zapier, Integramat, or you know Salesforce, or any other third-party software, it's going to be virtually the same on their side. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get started. And the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to create a zap here in zapier so we're going to create a zap and for this training video i'm going to be using our friend connector group so i'm going to be using our friend connector group so i'm going to create a zap and it's going to be called friend connector group webhook all right so it's just going to be called friend connector group webhook you can name yours whatever you want i'm going to type in here webhook and i'm going to find the webhooks by zapier so once I find the webhooks by Zapier, I'm going to come to this trigger event and I'm going to select catch hook. Now it is very important that you only select catch hook and you don't use a retrieve pole or you don't use a catch raw hook that you use this one that says catch hook. So I'm going to actually select the catch hook and then I'm going to hit continue. Now once I continue here, you can see that Zapier has actually given me the webhook URL. So if you remember from the last video, I explained to you what webhooks are and I told you that they were, you know, basically just URLs on the internet that could accept data and you could actually send data to them. So um, here Zapier is actually giving us the webhook URL. So we're just going to copy this. I've went ahead and copied it. And what we're going to do now is we're going to come over here to our group monkey extension. So we're going to come over here to our group monkey extension. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on this. We're going to click on the little hamburger menu. That's like kind of like a two line menu. And uh, we're going to click on webhooks here. All right. Now, just to just to be clear, since I am recording this, since I am actually recording this live and someone asked a question on why this catch hook. So there's three different types of hooks here. One is called a retrieve poll. A retrieve poll does not allow you to send data to it. All right. Um, so if I were to give you an exact an analogy between a catch hook and a retrieve poll, a retrieve poll would basically be, let's say you have a grandma and you love her and she's awesome and she baked you some cookies. All right. And you wrote a thank you letter and you're like, you know what, grandma, thank you so much for the cookies. Um, I really love you. You're the best grandma in the world. I, I need some more. I need some more cookies. All right. So you wrote the letter. You want to get this letter out to your grandma. Well, if your grandma was essentially a retrieve pole, if, if the mail that you were going to, the way you were going to mail the letter to your grandma, if you were using a webhook and you decided to use a retrieve pole, what that means is your grandma would physically, she would have to go to your house as many times as she could and ask you, hey, do you have a new letter for me? And if you do have a new letter for you, then you would give her the letter. All right. If you don't have a letter for, if you don't have a letter for your for her, then she's just aimlessly coming to your house and she has to make a trip coming to your house looking to see do you have a letter for her, yes or no. If you don't, then she goes away. If you do, you can give her the letter. That's what a retrieve poll is. A retrieve poll goes out and looks for data um, versus a catch hook. A catch hook is like, okay, you just send the letter in the mail to your grandma and now the letter actually goes to your grandma. So with the catch hook, you're going to send data somewhere. No one's going to come to you and look and be like, oh, hey, do you have any data for me? Oh, hey, do you have any data for me? When you have the data, you just send it off. So retrieve poll, they're going to come to you and ask you if you have any data. With a catch hook, you're just going to say, hey, I have some data. Here it is. And you're going to send it to them. Now, the difference between the catch hook and the catch raw hook is just how the data is formatted. If you end up using the catch raw hook, then you're going to have to do some formatting of the data yourself in order to actually be able to use it. So for Zapier, to keep it simple, we're just going to use the catch hook. All right. 
So we're going to use the ketchup just like I said at the beginning, um, but now I've answered your question, Glenn, so hopefully that makes sense to you and you have your question answered. So we've, what did we do? We picked webhooks by Zapier, we picked, we picked the actual catch hook, and then um, we hit continue, and we got this custom webhook URL from Zapier. So we've copied that, all right? Now that we've copied that, we're gonna actually open up our GroupMonkey extension here. So we've got our GroupMonkey extension opened up. We're gonna click on these little two lines right here, these beautiful symmetrical parallel lines. We're gonna click on them, and we're gonna click on the thing that says webhooks, because that's what we're doing, we're creating a webhook. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click this button right here that says add webhook. So now we're going to put in a title for our webhook, because we can add as many of these webhooks as we want. Um, we may have a zillion, gazillion, billion, trillion Facebook groups, and for each and every Facebook group, we wanna send data to a specific webhook, because you'll see in my webhook, I'm gonna send data to the webhook, and then I'm going to put all my group members on a specific email list, and I'm gonna send them out an email, and I'm gonna say, congratulations, you're in my Facebook group, thanks a lot, here's what to do in the group, stuff like that. So I'm gonna call this, um, friend connector. And I'm calling this friend connector because I'm specifically going to use this webhook for the friend connector group. Now I'm going to paste the webhook URL inside here. All right, so I'm going to paste the webhook URL inside here. I'm going to click submit. Now I've clicked submit. All right, so now that I've clicked submit, here's what I'm going to do. All right, so here's what I'm going to do now that I've clicked submit is I'm going to click this little button right here. Do you see this little button right here? It has like a box and an arrow. What this button will do is it will send some test data to your webhook so that your webhook recognizes, oh, hey, I got some data. So I'm gonna click that button right there and you can see right here it says test data was sent. All right, did you see that? It says test data was sent to your webhook. All right, so I've clicked that button. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come back over here to Zapier. I'm gonna hit continue. Now that I've sent the test data over here, and I am going to click this button that says test trigger. All right. So now I've clicked this button called test trigger, and I have all the data that GroupMonkey will typically give you inside the spreadsheet. So if you use GroupMonkey and you download a spreadsheet, or if you sync up with your Google Sheets, this data is already familiar to you. This is all the data that GroupMonkey is actually capturing. So uh, I'm gonna hit continue. And now that I hit continue, for all intents and purposes, we're done. We're done with the webhooks. We've created our webhook and we've uh, got our webhook connected in GroupMonkey. Now there's one more step that we have to do, all right? So what we're gonna do for this step is we're gonna finish up our automation. So I'm gonna use um, Autopilot Journeys. So this is Autopilot Journeys right here. It's a software that I'm in the middle of hacking. So I'm actually building a software that's a little bit better than this and then incorporating it in one of my other softwares along with some other stuff. Uh, but it, it's a pretty good software and there's definitely some stuff I like about it. Well, in this software, what we've done already is we've created a list and it's called Friend Connector Group Members. You can see that this li list is currently empty and we've, we've also created a journey. And this journey, this journey is called Friend Connector Group Members. And as soon as someone is actually added to this list, we're gonna send them out an email, all right? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use Autopilot Journeys and we are going to essentially add a contact. And we're gonna pick our Autopilot account here. Now you don't have to do this. You can do whatever you want with your catch hook. You can send an email out via Gmail. You can send a text message. You can do whatever type of automation that you want. All right. So for the group monkey perspective, the entire process of the actual webhook is literally creating your catch hook and then going and creating the, the catch hook inside inside group monkey like we've already done. And then there's one more step, which is just selecting that webhook whenever you start to approve your, your group members, all right? And I'm gonna show you that last process as soon as I set this up, all right? So I'm taking autopilot journeys. What I'm doing right now is just getting my group members onto my email list. If you're using a different email autoresponder, then you'll probably wanna use that here. So I'm gonna add them to the Spring Connector group monkeys list. I just showed you that Spring Connector 
I just showed you that frame connector, uh, that frame connector group monkey, that frame connector group members list, you group monkeys. All right, so I'm gonna add them to that list. I'm gonna get their email. Now their email is in here somewhere. Remember, uh, it was question one. All right, so what was our, what was our actual question? Let's look at our questions. So here's our questions, question one. So uh, that is going to be answer one. So answer one. Answer one is actually going to go in there. All right. Now their first name, we're going to put in their first name. We're going to put in their last name. So this is the data that's actually coming from GroupMonkey. Now you may be you may be wondering, oh hey John, this is not correct information. All right, so we could change that. If you want to see the real correct information, we could easily change that. And all we're going to do to actually change that is we're going to come over here to our member request. We're going to use GroupMonkey with this group. We're going to select our first person that has actually provided us an email. We're going to click select and approve. Now I like to know the gender, country, and tier of my group members, but we're also going to send data to a webhook URL. So we're gonna send data to a webhook URL, and then we're gonna pick this Spring Connector webhook, and then we're gonna hit confirm. Now it's gonna approve this group member right here. He's going to actually get approved. Now he's actually been approved to the group. Now what we can do is we can come back over here to our first step, and we can come back to this test trigger, and once we come back to this test trigger, we can literally just load more. So now I'm gonna pull in this, and now you can see I have the actual data. So here you can see the actual data of my group member. So here's the actual data of my group member. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue. And now we're going to look over here at our next step. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to put in here, we're going to look for his email address. And I think that was actually Q2. So that's going to be A2. There's his email address right there. And we're going to put in his, we're going to put in his first name. And we're going to put in his last name. Okay, so now we've put that information in. So now what we're going to do, are we going to fill any of this other stuff out? I don't think we're going to fill any of this other stuff out. We can go in and put lead source, friend, connected. All right. And then we don't have a LinkedIn, Twitter, we don't have any of that. So we're just going to continue here. So now we're going to test this step. Now we've tested the step. I'm going to turn on my zap and I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to reload this. My list was empty. Now we're preparing for takeoff. Now I have one group member here. All right. So I have one group member that's automatically been added to my email autoresponder, which means that they're actually going to now get my onboarding email and they're going to get my welcome email, which is, uh, something that I showed you that I've already set up over here. I've already set this up in my email autoresponder so that whenever they're added to this list, they're going to get my, my welcome email that's actually welcome, welcoming them to the actual group. All right, so now we have set up our webhooks. So to recap, what we've done is, to recap, what we've done is we went to Zapier, we have chosen an app, and that app was webhooks by Zapier, and we picked the catch hook. All right, then we set up our trigger. We just hit continue. We got the custom webhook URL. So we just got the custom webhook URL. And then we came over here to GroupMonkey. And inside GroupMonkey, what we did is we clicked these three little things or these two little things, these beautiful little perpendicular lines. We clicked on those, we clicked on webhooks. We added a new webhook. We pasted in our URL. We put in some title. And then once, and then we click submit. And then once we click submit, we click this little button right here so that we could send some test data to our webhook that we created inside Zapier. All right. Then once we were done with that, 
what we did is we came and we essentially, well, we built the rest of our Zap, but what we did was we came, we picked another group member, and what we did is we just basically, I wanted to get their gender, country, and tier information, and we picked send data to webhook URL, and then we picked our friend connector webhook that we added, and let's just make sure that this is live, and then we picked confirm. That's added our group member, and it has actually sent all the data to the actual webhook. So now all that data has been actually sent to the webhook, and then if I come over here to my friend connector group, now I have two people on my email autoresponder from my friend connector group. All right, so now just one more time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick one, two, three, four people. We're gonna pick four people. So we've picked four people right there. We're gonna, we already have two people on our autoresponder. We're picking four more people that have joined the group and they've given me their email address. We're gonna select and approve. We're going to get their country, gender, and tier. That's optional. I'm doing that because I like to know that information. It helps me. We're gonna send data to a webhook. We're gonna use it for a connector. Now we can also download a CSV and we can also send data directly to our Google Sheets. We learned how to do this in the previous training videos and you can do it all, all of it, at the exact same time if you wanna do it all at the same time, all right? We're not gonna do it all at the same time. So what we're going to do is we're just going to send the data to our webhook and we're gonna pick our friend connector webhook that we've actually created. And then we're just gonna hit confirm. Now we're gonna let GroupMonkey do its job it's over there monkeying around and actually do its job. It's just doing its job and it's approving these people into our actual group. And because we've set up a, a webhook, so it's sending the data out to our webhook, which is Zapier. And then Zapier is actually putting that information into our autoresponder. And then our autoresponder is segmenting these group members on a unique list. So I know these are all the group members in this list. They're interested in this group, which means they could be interested in these other products and services that I may want to sell them. Uh, and then our autoresponder is also going to send them an email. So you can see now I have one, two, three, four, my four additional people that I actually just approved. So now I have six people from my group members that have requested to be in my group. Then one. I've added them into my group on autopilot with GroupMonkey. I've automated their onboarding with my webhook through Zapier. All right. Now that, they're, now that they're actually on my autoresponder, now I could go into my actual autoresponder and now I could actually continue to build out a welcoming and onboarding sequence for them. I could send them another email after day one, another email after day two, and then one after day three. And then on day four, I could send them four emails. And on day five, I could send them six emails. And on day six, I could send them 12 emails. And they'll be getting all confused. Like the longer I stay in this group, the more emails that I'm getting. So hopefully you guys, that our group monkeys, you're not just monkeying around in your group. Hopefully that you're using your group as a way to actually bring in leads, bring in traffic, build authority for yourself, build a brand for yourself, and create content and value in front of your group members so that ultimately you can drive them to an offer where they can actually buy something. So anyways, all of that information is extra. I do have a free course on how to actually monetize your groups and how to monetize your social media accounts in general. But for the purpose of this training video, now you know exactly how you can actually set up the webhooks with Zapier. In the next video, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna set up a, a webhook with another platform that people like to use instead of Zapier. Um, so if you don't wanna use Zapier and you wanna use Integromat, we're gonna cover that in the next video, okay?